The vehicle next to me is one of the most anticipated electric vehicles coming to the market this year. This is the 2024 Kia EV9 GT line. It's actually also the LAN, but it didn't rhyme with the last two. So we have the LAN package. It's fully, fully loaded. This is the top trim you can get in Canada. It comes in around $80,000. Pretty expensive, but if it's not in your price point, this does come at lower trims. You don't have to get all-wheel drive. You can option it rear-wheel drive, but it is absolutely fantastic. Now, Niall already took an in-depth look at this thing, but I couldn't resist it. I had to get my hands on it as well. I had to look at it. I had to sit in front of this camera and give you my thoughts. My roads are a little bit different in Quebec. My charging is a little bit different in Quebec. So, and I've also driven the base EV6. I've driven the EV6 GT. So here we are with the EV9. I feel like I have a lot to say about it. So on the off chance that this is the only video that you wanna watch on the Kia EV9, I'm gonna give you some specs. So we have twin electric motors with a 99.8 kilowatt hour battery. That is good for 435 kilometers on a full charge. So pretty decent. We're, we're getting closer and closer to that 500 kilometer mark, which is pretty nice, but still 435 kilometers is, is very good. And also since it's pretty warm here in Quebec, it's about 16 degrees Celsius, I'm getting a lot more range than that on full charge. I'm getting just over, just over like four, seven, so that's pretty good. Now let's talk about horsepower. We are getting 379 horsepower because I do have the all-wheel drive version. Very, very fast, 516 pound-feet of torque. This thing has legs. This big three-row SUV has absolute legs. Now let's talk about charging times. If you can find a 350 kilowatt hour charger, you're gonna go from anywhere from 10% to 80% in about 24 minutes. And it just gets longer from there. So 50 kilowatts, you're looking at about 10% to 80%. And that's gonna take you about an hour, 60 minutes, maybe more than that. But I mean, still, we're almost there. That 24 minute, if you can find one on a, on a road trip, that's gonna be excellent. You're really not gonna be sitting for too long. So we're getting there. We're getting close to being competitive with the gas market. It's very nice. Now this is one of the first affordable mass produced three row electric SUVs that we have seen here, especially here in Canada. I can't even really think of what it competes with. It's just so fantastic. They've built this thing from the ground up, fully new chassis, everything's new. This is really awesome. I love it in this color. Now, sometimes we have different colors, so it makes the videos a little bit more interesting, but we have the same color, but I don't care. This is really cool. Let's take it on the road. I'm gonna talk about charging, the Kia Connect app, how that works with the car, how you can use your key to get into the, how you can use your phone to get into the car and everything else in between. Performance, let's take it on the road. I'm so excited to show you this. Okay, on the road with the 2024 Kia EV9, and I'm gonna tell you right now, this just might be one of the best electric SUVs or SUV in general that I have driven so far this year and possibly so far as a as a whole in general because it just so far it's just doing everything so well it's just being a great SUV you know throw out the motor throw out whether or not it's electric or gas completely forget about that it is just a great SUV on merit on base and that is really really cool and so let's just talk about it let's get right into it here so first I want to touch a little bit on the exterior I have the exact same color as Nile exact same trim exact same everything but I like it the blue trim is really nice we've been seeing the blue trim everywhere but I really like it. I think it might actually be the color that I would go with because it, it does stand out it, it kind of shows off the body lines really well I think black or white for a car like this or an SUV like this is just way too boring you gotta have the blue mixed up in there and I'm glad we do not to mention, and this, time, this might just be because the vehicle is so new right now, it turns heads, it grabs people's attention. I think that's because it's new. Once these things are mass produced, once these things are everywhere, maybe that will stop. But at least for the early days, the people that are, you know, are the early adopters of a Kia EV9 are going to enjoy the fact that it grabs people's attention and it will forever grab my attention just because I'm a fan of the platform now. I love the ride height. I like the entryway. It's not, it's not a high SUV. It's not hard to get into back or front. Very good. I like the big Tires, you know, like they're, they're not interesting EV wheels. They're very basic, but they match with the rest of the body on the car so, so well that I absolutely love it. I like the fact as well that we have a front trunk. I think it looks really, really nice. And it kind of, you know, there's, it's not huge, not a lot of space in there. It is definitely more space than something like a high end Ionic 5. So that's a big plus. Now also showed you that we went in depth with these lighting patterns that you can have, and you can have a bunch of customized ones, customizable ones, and also buy more with Kia connected services and stuff like that. That might rub, rub people the wrong way. I don't know. You can let me know in the comments, but I think that is the case where you could uh, kind of DLC some of the lighting patterns. 
that that's the way the automotive market might be going. Just, you know, I just a heads up for things because that's this is probably not the only thing we're going to see that happens like that. But it is really cool. It's an added thing. It gives this electric vehicle a lot of personality, I think. So that's fantastic. Not to mention the front headlights, the daytime running LEDs look absolutely fantastic at night, at any time of day, but really at night, it just looks so good. They shine so bright. Whoever's designing the LEDs, you know, front back, you know, the design for these, you know, Kia Hyundai's, whatever, they need a raise, you know, they really need a big raise because they've been doing it so well on almost all the new refreshes that are coming out. It's they're, they're all fantastic. And the Kia EV9 is absolutely no exception here. The back is super nice too. No exhaust, of course, because it's an electric vehicle, no noise. So yes, it does have the legs. It can go fast, but it is more on the boring side. You are going to get used to launches. I'll talk about performance in a little bit here, but yeah, like it's just so solid. It's got plenty of trunk room. It's got power folding third row seats fantastic and i think he is up to something here because they're marketing this as like not a luxury suv but then when you drive it in the top trim it very very much offers all of the same things that you would expect from a top line luxury suv and i even think there might they might be beating them on the price point but there's just not a lot like this out there three row fully electric suv new platform from the ground up this is like you know basically groundbreaking. There's also one thing that I got to test this week. Usually we don't get app access. We don't, you know, they don't let you log in or they don't give you the username or we forget to ask for it. This time Kia gave me a little key with an email and a username to log into the Kia Connect app. So basically what that allows me to do is I can see the state of charge. I can unlock the vehicle, you know, whatever I need to do. Right. But also a new thing coming or a new thing that's been added is that I can now use my smartphone as a key. I can unlock the car as if I had the key fob. So I can leave the key fob at home and I can walk up to the vehicle with just my iPhone in my pocket because the, the digital key is connected to my Apple wallet. The car will detect that, open the car, and I can drive away with absolutely no problem. I've been using it all week. I've been leaving my key fob at home on purpose and it's worked absolutely flawlessly. I've never had to pull out the phone and unlock. I've never ever had to do that. So it's really, really solid technology. It's technology I'm really, really excited to see because it's just easier, right? Like, you know, I'm always looking around for my key fob sometimes. I'm like, oh my God, where did I leave that thing? A uh, boom, I don't have to do that anymore because I never forget my phone. I always go everywhere with my phone. Problem absolutely solved. This Kia Connect app is great. You can see state of charge, how long is remaining, different things like that. I really like it. I think that, you know, more automotive manufacturers need to adopt like the, tef the Tesla method of just putting, you know, having everything in your phone. We don't really need key fobs anymore. Everybody has their phone all the time. I think that's just the way things are going and I, I like it. I'm, I will use it. How, if I ever bought a Kia EV9, I would definitely, definitely use it. So now let's talk, before we get to the interior and like comfort and stuff like that, let's talk about a little bit about performance. I said 349 horsepower, I believe. I don't have it written down in front of me, but it's a rocket. It's an all wheel drive rocket. I'm gonna put it in sport mode and I'm gonna give it the gas. Holy moly, and it's raining out and I'm slipping. Woo, <laughs> little slip there, but oh, oh. That EV power is nuts. So I have 96% battery state of charge. So I'm getting full beams, as much power as these, these motors can give me. I've also got 471 kilometers and that's more than I believe what Kia estimates. So that's pretty good. I was almost close to, to 500 when I got in the car. So that's really, really good. And it's cold out today. So that's good too. And it's like, it just, oh, it just never gets old. Oh, to be able to accelerate like that doesn't get old, but I feel like what does get old is the feeling. Like I don't get the stomach drop feeling that I, you know, that I got the first couple of times I launched myself in any EV. It's not just the Kia EV9. So other than performance, I do have an eco mode, which I will put myself into here. I'm just gonna turn at the stop sign and I'll show you. Also my turn signals, when I turn those things on, I've got little cameras which is fantastic. That is definitely a premium package, but we love it. We see it on Kia Hyundai as well, which is very nice. So I'm in eco mode now. I'll just give it a little full throttle. So what happens there is the torque is definitely still all available. I don't feel any torque limiting at all, really, but I only feel one of the motors running, which is interesting. And also there's a lot of power limiter going on. There's, it's really not giving me full beams. Other drive modes I have normal, which obviously just I've been driving in that one most of the time. And then I have my drive mode if I want to. Basically you can choose like, you know, how the throttle response is, how the braking is, and also how the steering is. I basically keep everything normal and I stiffen up my steering. That's basically all I do. It handles very well. This is actually one of the best handling SUVs that I found. And the fact that it's the three row and doesn't drive like it's three row is absolutely 
absolutely fantastic because my batteries are on the floor, right? So my, my center of gravity is so low. So I feel really connected to the car. I feel, and that's, that again goes for most EVs. Like when you're driving an EV sedan and the battery's on the floor, you really feel sometimes when you're in sport mode going through a corner, you feel like you're in a little go-kart because you have that much control, that much stability in the, in the system. So it's really, really good for that. I absolutely, such a huge fan of that. So let's move on to the interior. And the first thing I want to talk about is my massage chair or this chair in general, because the driver's chair is special. I have a whole bunch of different settings. I can bolster here, bolster that, but I can also kind of tilt the chair front to back. I'm going to try to do it. Like you can see, you see my chair tilting, right? Like, like that's not normal. Like it's the base of the chair actually tilting almost like a zero gravity thing. Really, really fantastic stuff. It like kind of gives you a different angle and I love it. It's like one of the most comfortable seats I've ever sat in and I have a full body massage going on. Too bad the passenger doesn't have it because my wife would enjoy something like this, but okay, my back's a little sore from carrying the baby all day. I'm gonna go in the Kia EV9 and get a massage while I drive and get coffee. It's fantastic. And I'm usually not somebody who uses massage features in cars. And here I am today telling you that I am using this massage feature like it's nobody's business. I absolutely love it. Now, uh, let's talk about, I talked to you about how this car handles really good, but I wanna say that this is probably one of my favorite steering wheels of, of all the cars I've ever driven. I am a steering wheel guy. I'm a steering wheel connoisseur, I like to say. I'm, I love steering wheels. It's my main interface with the vehicle. So that it needs to be good. And this is like, not like a perfect circle. It's got like two flat edges. It's so perfect. It's nice and big, especially when you're driving a big car, you want a big steering wheel. And I feel like I have that really well here. Um, just fantastic. I've got all my cruise control stuff here, my volume control. I've got my paddles for my regenerative braking levels. This isn't, you know, for a sport mode or a simulated sport mode or anything like that, but I can change my regenerative braking. Of course, this has eye pedal. One pedal driving is fantastic. When you brake, puts a little bit extra power in the battery and you can just drive the car with basically one foot. Fantastic. I love that. And I also have a bunch of massive screens. It's screens for days. And they did something interesting with the infotainment. Infotainment has wireless CarPlay, all that stuff. You know, Niall already went over it, so I don't talk about it too much. But I like the fact that, you know, we've been complaining, or at least I've been somebody who complaining, and I know a lot of other journalists have too, about the fact that it's too much haptic buttons, it's too much of this, there's not enough physical. They did haptic, but they also did physical and they did physical and I think in the right way because I can control basically all of my HVAC with these little buttons here. Fantastic. And the rest, my quick stuff, I can, I have the haptic buttons and so far they've worked. I've got no problem. When you do things like this, you give me the best of both worlds. I really can't complain about it. They're both fantastic. I like them both. So that's really, really good. I like the fact that, you know, I have like a third screen almost. It's all attached to one screen, but it looks like a third screen for my climate control and I press a button and it kind of shoots over into the main screen. Fantastic. Oh, I also have a digital mirror here, which is very nice too. I've got two sunroofs because one wasn't enough. You got two. I love that as well. This has to be on your list. You have to, you have to consider it. I'm telling you, if you trust my opinion at all, go and check one of these out. I love it. It's like, it's probably, if, if nothing else competes, I haven't driven the Hyundai Santa Fe and I'm talking like not, we're not comparing EV to EV. We're just comparing like three row to three row because that's what this is. So it kind of falls in that category a little bit. I don't know. We'll see what the Santa Fe has to offer. I do have it um, sometime this year in like a couple months, actually it's coming. Um, I do have it. I don't know. I, I think this is gonna give it a run for its money. This is my favorite three row SUV I have ever, ever, ever driven. But like, that's where we're gonna leave it, I think, because I just don't know what to complain about. I don't know what to complain about. <laughs> it's, it's such a solid platform. I, it's, it's annoying that I can't find something to, to complain about. Usually I can, but nope. No, it's too good. I've got space for days. If you want to know everything there is to know about the Kia EV9, check out the video that Niall did. He went in depth. He loves it. I think almost as much as I do. Maybe I love it a little bit more. I don't know, but it was a very, like, I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. And I'm so glad I took this car despite him already doing it because I, oh my God, I enjoy it so, so much. Uh, we love our EVs here on PRN. That's true. We also love our V8s. That's also true. You saw the Jaguar F-Type twice seen the key of you and I twice. You know we like a vehicle when we got to feature it twice because I saw Niall's video and I was like, no, 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 I'm getting my hands on that. And then I drove the Jaguar and I told Niall, 
you got to get in this thing. Like people need to hear what you what you think. So you know, we, we love doing this kind of stuff, and, and it's really cool. And yeah, I'm leaving it there. Go drive the Kia EV9. Walk, don't run. It's a fantastic platform that hopefully only gets better as the years go on. With that being said, make sure you like, subscribe, everything like that. Watch another video. We've got a ton of them. We've got a ton of them coming up. We're booked like crazy for cars. It's gonna be a fun summer, so stay tuned for more. With that being said, I will see you in the next week in the next car. Take care.